let's take a look at the cube function. I like to call this one the vertical snake. So let's jump in and make a table of values so we can see this vertical snake. Let's start by substituting in, substituting in negative one, zero, and one. And so we take each of these inputs and we cube it or multiply it by itself three times. So negative one times negative one times negative one. Okay, so three negatives will give us another negative and negative one cubed is just negative one again. Zero cubed, of course, is zero. One cubed is one. So let's plot these three points. Negative one, negative one, zero, zero, and one, one. Okay, so I like to pause here because many people tend to get the cube function confused with the cube root function. I think it's really helpful here to either plot or just think about two more points. So if we were to just substitute in two and negative two, and you probably even could just do this with two. I think it'll show you enough. So two cubed or two times two times two is eight. And thus negative two cubed must be negative eight. So let's plot those points. So we see two, eight would be somewhere up here. Two negative eight would be somewhere down here. Excuse me, negative two, negative eight. That I think helps you really clearly see that the cube function is your vertical snake. Okay, you should be drawing your graph like this. You don't have to draw the whole thing, but you know that it has to go up there and meet that point two, eight. It has to go down and meet that point negative two, negative eight. Okay, that should clear up any confusion. So just think of that tip and you will definitely have the right graph drawn the correct way. All right, now let's look at some of the characteristics. So domain is the list of all of our X values. Okay, we're looking from left to right. So from the leftmost point, we see that our X's go on negative infinity. They get more and more negative. If our graph continued, all the X's are through, keep going forever positive. So we have all real numbers here. So our domain will write as negative infinity to infinity. Okay, and our range is the list of all our possible Y values. So same idea, it's all real numbers again. This time, remember, with range, you want to look from bottom to top to keep you focused on you're looking at the Y values. Okay, but if you look from the very bottom, so your graph goes like this, you can see all Y values are included on this graph. So let's write from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, like all of our other essential functions so far, our intercepts are nothing too exciting. Both our x and y intercept are at the origin at zero, zero. Okay, so now let's look at symmetry. Remember, our two types for functions are y-axis and origin. y-axis has to be a reflection over the y-axis, and you can see that that's not the case here because we have part of our graph in the first quadrant and part in the third quadrant. So that's a good clue or a flag that you might have origin symmetry here. Okay, remember origin symmetry is if you took your graph and rotated it 180 degrees, it should land on top of itself. Geometrically, we can say that for every point x, y on the graph, there should be a point negative x, negative y on the graph. Okay, and you can actually see that with a couple specific examples with one, one, and negative one, negative one, or with these two points here with two, eight, and negative two, negative eight. So those are just examples of what that means. So you imagine that 180 degree rotation, that will help you see that this is, this graph, this cube function has origin symmetry, um, or you can think about that geometric definition. All right, so let's say we have origin symmetry here. And remember, if we have origin symmetry, we get to classify this function as a special type. We call it odd. Okay, so the O's go together. If it's origin symmetry, it's an odd function. If it's y-axis symmetry, you would call it even. 
right, let's finish up by looking at increasing and decreasing intervals. Remember, we use the x's to talk about what the y's are doing. And you always want to look from left to right. So let's take a second and put our pencils on the graph. Okay, so from the farthest left point that's showing on your graph, okay, and we're going to follow our graph moving from left to right and see are we moving up or down? What's happening as we move higher in our x's? Okay, so as we move across, you should feel your pencil going up. That means that your y's are increasing as your x's are. So this graph is actually only increasing and it's increasing over all real numbers. So look at that one more time, pencil on the graph. As you move to the right, your y's are increasing. So we'll say our increasing interval is actually over all real numbers. There are no decreasing intervals. So this is your cube function for your vertical snake.